Asia Media Summit 2012 is seeing a big gather up of over 500 delegates from over 50 nations across the globe coming and meeting and sharing ideas both inside the plenary rooms and outside the doors like here in the Media Hub where I'm standing right now. Now in the Media Hub, one very interesting booth that I'd like to share with you is the booth from Myanmar which is right behind me. Uh, they're from the TV and radio organization of Myanmar. Now the head of the organization, the head of their delegation who came here to Bangkok, believes that opening up Myanmar will mean little by little liberalizing the media in that nation as well. Well, as you may all aware, our country is a changes a big step toward the reforming of the uh, country. Uh, so that the, our, as a, our media people, we also have to reform and uh, more uh, lively and more open and more supportive to our people. That is uh, our main goal to uh, changing the media reform. Right. More supportive to your people, does that mean there is less government control? Well, as uh, nowadays, uh, everybody is uh, expecting the freedom of media in our country. Uh, main thing is our government also arching to go to the media freedom. So nowadays, uh, our uh, country, led by the, our current government, is uh, ma de making the development of media law in the printed media and the uh, broadcast media also. That is a big step uh, changes to the freedom of media in Myanmar. Mr. Kin Mung is also optimistic that within five years from now, freedom of speech in the ASEAN region will become tangible. This morning's opening ceremony saw top executives of international organizations speaking their minds on the panel. Surin Pisuwan, Secretary General of ASEAN, told the audience that due to the fact that the middle class and purchasing power of Asia, especially in Southeast Asia, is rising, therefore it is significantly focused upon. However, there are people left behind in terms of economic and social opportunities. Therefore, it is the media's duty to ease this gap by offering information and education while also promoting democracy. The AMS 2012 is the ninth of its kind, and Thai PBS and the AIBD, or the Asia Pacific Institution on Broadcast Development, as the main media institutions organizing this event, are hopeful that the people attending the event will take the ideas and approaches shared to make a sustainable contribution to their society. So the issues to be discussed at this summit will be very interesting. There are questions of uh, the role of the media in issues of development and conflicts, media literacy, the public broadcasting service, and violence, I mean, women and children. These are the issues that uh, have been a quite a big challenge for the media for many, many years. But within the context of modern worlds, I mean, uh, media technologies have changed the landscape and are posing a big challenge to the mainstream media. The internet uh, media, I mean, is now I mean, something that uh, seems to be changing I mean, the, the face of this, uh, of this media world. So this is one of the issues that, that will be discussed here at the AMS. And as the public broadcaster, and Thai is very proud to be hosting this event. And we hope that from our experience, we'll be able to contribute to the discussions and learn from each other. This morning's session, Media Development and Conflict, Can Media Make a Difference, saw all speakers agreeing that the social responsibility of the media is not only to reform, but also to resolve conflicts and misperception. However, the new media is so fast and is becoming a source of traditional media already. Therefore, one of the speakers added that balancing political power is a big challenge for the media across the globe. The Asia Media Summit's theme is creating impact in today's society. Yet, some academics attending the event are, skill, are still skeptic about the negative side of the media, especially in the internet and mobile platforms. Well, the, to look at it from the positive side, um, it's a liberation. The media have liberated people. Uh, we've looked at the statistics in the past. We have 524 radio stations, and they are 80 percent are dominated by the state. Right? Uh, same thing with TV, with, with television. They're all dominated by the state. But right now, with social media in particular, people are equipped with the means, with the means and the power to speak out. So if you look at it from a more, from a democratic point of view, people have been liberated uh, and the media platform has been uh, liberalized. So that's the positive side of it. But in the meantime, I mean, th there are two sides uh, of the coin for everything. 
in the meantime, um, a lot of the, the communicated um, content through this new media uh, plagued with all kinds of uh, prejudice, with, with all kinds of uh, hate speeches, right? And especially if you look at political media, because we see that a lot also in social media. So um, I don't have a ready answer on how to, how, how to resolve this problem. But um, if you look at the experience of countries in the West who have more extensive uh, experience with social media and so forth, media literacy of the public is probably the, the key to resolving any issues towards the future because there is no way that a regulator um, like the NBTC, the National Broadcast and Telecom Commission, which is a newly established regulator in Thailand, to solve all the problems because we have so many channels and we're going to have a digital switch over in a few years and we, so we're going to have like hundreds of, uh, hundreds of channels of satellite, cable and whatnot, you know, floating around. So the only thing to do is to equip the public, the, the, the audience, the public audience uh, with, the, with the means and, and the power to read critically, to read critically the content that are disseminated to them. And whose job is that? Because everybody wants to control people's <laughs> mind. So why would they, in this case, literate? Yeah, especially right? the media. The media never literate, uh, they never give uh, people literacy uh -huh. about themselves. Right. Yeah. So, um, if, um, probably the educational system. If you look at, 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 at the case in other countries, especially like in, in Japan, where uh, the multiplicity of channels, you know, of, of media floating around, um, media literacy is part of the uh, secondary and, and I believe even primary education uh, curriculum. So uh, kids have been educated and have been taught to, to read into the media messages critically since they were young. So they don't uh, just look at things at face value. They, they look into the uh, advertising messages, they know they're being fooled into consuming um, sugar, you know, more than they're, they're, they're supposed to, things like that. This afternoon, we'll be seeing three parallel sessions on building sustainable small radio and TV stations, women and children issues, and of course, the 2003 Bangkok Declaration, what's next as the um, steering committee of the AMS 2012 uh, is believing that the Bangkok Declaration, which was written back in 2003, needs to be revised with the advancement in technology and the digital age. Of course, many are looking forward for the updated version. More updates coming up. I'm Super Drunkly and Sawan reporting for Thai PBS.